Many of you are probably wondering why there's boxes up here. Um, and it's no coincidence that they're priority mailboxes because some of these are actually there's more than this, but some of these items um, become priorities in our life. Um, sometimes we don't realize it. I know I've battled with some of these items in my past and sometimes they creep back up and we're always fighting. Today's service um, is also in the wake of the, uh, the school shooting that uh, Satan sometimes is like a mountain climber on the cliff side, he just has to get that right crack and get his toe in there and, and he's he's up your mountain. Part one is, uh, this is a three part sermon. Three parts in one day, but, they're, but I go pretty quick, so. Part one is renewing your mind. Uh, many people attend church and for what reason? Some come to different churches to be entertained. They like the, the bands and the, uh, the meet, greeting of people and so on. But why do we attend church? Is it to be entertained or to recharge our spiritual batteries? I went to a Christian concert recently, a few months ago, and uh, I, I enjoyed the warm-up acts, but when the headliner act got on the stage, it was all glitz and glamour, you know, all the smoke and the color, colored lights. And the whole time, Romans 12, 2 kept echoing in my head, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm not saying they were doing any wrong, but, but we're not to be conformed to this world. We do things of this world, but do we really need bright lights and strobe lights and fog to make, to make something better? Do we need a hook to catch people, to lure people to God? People are craving the colored lights and music that moves them and someone to make them feel special. So in part two is called the garbage. A man was going from garbage can to garbage can, he would pick out the old food people threw out. He was eating like it was a gourmet meal. And some of the food even had maggots in it. One day a businessman came up to him and offered him a meal in a cafe they were standing by. The grungy guy looked at him and said, why would I want that? You eat it and look no healthier than me. The grungy man pointed to the cafe and continued. Besides, those people would have trouble with someone like me coming inside. So what are we feeding to our souls? Are we filling it with garbage like TV, movies, internet? These are all not bad, but Remember, Satan needs that little crack to get his toe in. So when you come back to the good food, is it less desirable? Does the good food of God's Word regurgitate once you leave? So you feel empty again and try to fill, it, fill the void with non-spiritual garbage. And part three is called fill her up. Have you ever had the urge to stick water in your car's gas tank? What about coffee or one of those energy drinks? 
None of them will make your car work. In order for your car to run, it requires a few things. Oxygen, fuel, oxygen plus fuel equals an explosion, but there must be a spark that ignites the explosion. The explosion causes a piston to move. Attached to that piston is an arm. The arm is connected to a wiggly shaft similar to bicycle pedals. One goes up and the other goes down. You can see the flow to energize a car and get it moving. We are identical to this. We require oxygen and fuel to make us physically run. Spiritually, we require the same. Each day, our lives are influenced by things we participate in. Going back to Romans 12, 2, that said we are not to be conformed to this world, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I can remember hearing from grandparents and great-grandparents about how they were not allowed to participate in a lot of things we participate in nowadays, from television, movies, and it's not pornography, it's the seemingly harmless material that gets slipped in. There are all the innuendos, the lifestyles. Looking at lifestyles, Colossians 1, 9 through 14, in the King James Version, says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. 11. Strengthening with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Thirteen, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Fourteen, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. So he wants us to have the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. 1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sent it against his own body. Next is lack of modesty. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10, King James Version. Verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shameless, shamefacedness and sobriety not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Verse 10 is, But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. The next subtitle is bad language. Matthew 12, 34, King James. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The tongue is a real tough one to tame. And uh, it takes a lot of practice to keep it 
under wraps. Innuendos. 1 John 2.16 in the King James. For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. We also need to consider who we hang out with. The question is, are you influencing them, or are they influencing you? We are in a battle with ourselves daily. We crave stuff that is bad for us, both spiritually and physically. Reflecting back on the automobile, it, re it requires a special fuel. Anything else just makes it a pretty long run. And now we have a, an exercise that I need a volunteer for. Anybody want to volunteer? You want to volunteer? Okay. Maybe a couple people. <laughs> okay. Guys, see how many boxes you can pick up. <laughs> Go ahead and pick up the others. Now try to greet each other. Try to try to hug or shake hands. Or... It's it's hard to do when your lives are full, huh? And imagine if you were carrying any of these or all of these and trying to pick up a full-size cross. So now chuck them down, chuck them down the aisle. of you to detect your spiritual lives. This list is for you and does not have to be shared with anyone unless you feel you need to. Each time you do one of these items, place a check mark next to it, leave room for lots of check marks. Now it's up to you which column items should be in. And you can evaluate and try to do these double sided so you can have two weeks or you can have them copied and, and make even more works. Each time you do one of the items, it takes a check mark. Make room for lots of check marks, so make them small. Saturday night, add up the check marks for the negative items, and then do the same for the positive items. Compare the positive number to the negative number. If the negative number is bigger, try again next week until the positive number is greater. This takes a lot of work. And don't feel bad if you don't get it, if you don't get the negative number bigger than the positive number. We are at a constant battle. I guarantee you though, if you can get the positive number bigger, your life will become enriched, more blessed, more closer to God than you ever imagined. 
In closing, um, I would like to pray with each of you individually. So if anybody needs to leave quickly, raise your hand and I'll come to you first. Uh, we went pretty quick. So I'll turn this off and we'll start the music. Crushing sin within his peaceful aftermath. 